This is Comic Picks by the Glick. Hey, I'm your host, Jason Glick. Hey, Jason, what do you have on tap for us today? Well, it's like I'm talking about like a couple of graphic novels that, you know, like go together that I recently got got, got in the mail like a wh- little while ago. It's like, well, because, you know, it's like, well, I tend to like sleep on stuff like a little bit just just because, you know, hey, I, I follow trade paperbacks. So you're just going to like, you're not going to read about like the, like the new like single issue stuff. You're just going to like, get get like, get the stuff I, I read when I talk about talk about the collect the collections and sometimes it's gonna like follow like 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 a month month or so behind you know when they actually come out depending on you know how things go and how things actually ship to me but then there's like the stuff that you know like i didn't actually bother with like the first time around the second time around or the third time around but no maybe the fourth or fifth time a that's the right time to do it and that's kind of the subject we've got here which is like you know these two graphic novels by a couple of creators who like made like apparently like did really great work together, and then you know took a while to like finally like you know reconnect and um do their next um their next graphic novel project together or you no know, serialized comic book story because like both of these both of these um collections were originally ser- serialized as sing- in single issue form before they're collected in and graphic novels and lo- this is the long way around of saying that I'm talking about um two two graphic novels from writer Joe Kelly and artist um, Ken Nimura. First of which being their seminal I Kill Giants. This is a series that came out um, back, in the, back in the mid-aughts when um, Kelly was um, best known for his, for his work on um, Deadpool, showing that, hey, you know, the Merc with the Mouth actually could sustain a, uh, his own solo title and, actually, and it could actually be good as well. Who would have thunk? And, you know, he's... And like that's that's something that's paid dividends like in like in the years since. And also he his um his his work on on action comics over like over in the DC, which basically did a good job like you know keeping Superman relevant in the face of like you know the advent of like you know uber edgy teams like the the Authority. So when uh but the thing is like you know he he was a guy who was just known for like, for superhero work, and so when this this series came out. Um, here is, like, it was kind of took everyone by surprise in the sense that, you know, hey, here's someone who's, like, done, like, a lot of, like, you know, er, like, irreverent, um, quasi-violent super, superhero work, and then doing something, like, you know, complete, completely different. Basically a grounded, um, story that, you know, trade, that kind of dances back and forth between what is real and what what is not, as it focuses on, like, a protagonist who was an outlier, like, you know, for the time, and arguably still is in mainstream comic space. Um, like a like an elementary school girl, and also working with an artist who no one had ever heard of, but arguably like you know knocked it out of the park here because I Kill Giants is a story of um one fifth grader um named Barbara Thorson who doesn't doesn't fit in. It's like when it's like it's like when uh when when we're introduced to her, it's like so she's like it's like she's basically like, you know like poo pooing on the idea of like of like one of a fellow student who whose dad is coming in as a motivational speaker and he's just like, you know, trying to get the, the class hyped, typed up and she's just like, not, not buying this at all. And so when he tries to like, you know, like, it's like say, like, you know, what's your deal? It's like, it's like, it's like, huh, I hunt giants. I kill giants. And you're kind of just wondering like, you know, what is this girl's deal? And, and like, she just, you know, maintains this like, our, like aura of like confidence and defiance when she's sent to the print principal's office, when she, when she's home, you know, dealing with her, with her um, strung out sister, who's, you know, like, left to, like, manage, uh, watch over her and her brother. It's like, and as she's also just, you know, managing a, like, like, her, like, a D&D session with her, bro- with her brother and his friends. It's like, and doing it with, like, you know, like, uh, appreci- appreciably nihilistic skill for a, a, like, for a dungeon master. I've known one or two, at least. And, and also just, like, you know, but at the same time, though, you kind of want to just, you know, what's, like, you know, what's going going through her head? Because, like, you know, there's clearly something that, like, that's, like, you know, bothering her, but, you know, she can't, that she's not, like, but she's not really going to articulate about beyond the fact that, you know, she, that the whole, like, you know, she kills giants bit er- earlier on. And then, you know, things take a fantastic twist early at the end of the issue when we see all these, you know, like, pre- like creatures, like, around her in the, it's like in the like in the, like in the Long Island river, riverfront um, scenery at the 
into the first issue. So you're kind of wondering, like, well, wait a second. Maybe she's not crazy? Maybe she does kill giants, and she, and, like, no one else is a believer? Because, you know, that's, you know, hey, we're still dealing with, like, you know, comic books here. I think that's still a ve- a, ve- a very valid um, viewpoint here. And that's kind of like the angle that um, Kelly and Nimura take, like, through a good portion of this, like, of this series. Like, you know, is Barbara you know, like, actually a genuine giant killer? Or is she just a, uh, you know, disturbed little girl who's, you know, running from something very real, living it in, like, in her home? It's like, and even though it's like, you know, I think, like, the series, like, you know, has its, like, you know, like, flaws, like, it does kind of read like, hey, you know, like, like, approaching middle-aged guy writes, um, young, young girl dialogue, that's, that's kind of, and that's kind of, that's kind of weird because it doesn't quite, doesn't quite hit, it's like hit right. It's like, and it's like, and it's like, and it just kind of feels, you know, like, little, like a little bit stilted at, like at times, but it's like, you're kind of, you are kind of wondering, you know, what's, what's really going on here. It's like, and, but like, it's like that kind of mystery, like does draw you in, but it also like draws you in, in the sense of it's like, you know, just like, you know, what's. You know, like, you know, like how messy things things are going to get. Like how how he's willing to like you know, how um both creators are willing to go like you know deep into like how what how screwed up um Barbara's home life is. Not just her home life, but her also her uh, how that and how that well how her home life bleeds into her her school life and how she's you know she's the weirdo at school and that leads to her being picked on by the like by the bully. It's like and how she and even though she fights back, you know, like this is still like a big strong girl who's just like you know. Like not not about to crumple in front of just like you know like marginal resistance. It's like, but then there's also like you know the uh, like the new girl in it's like in school, Sophie, who does kind of like you know like see see this like you know weirdo next door and thinks like, hey, you know, it's like maybe I would like to know like you know what's going on in her mind. So there's like there's all this like struggle right here. It's not just you know like you know how much Barbara's life sucks. It's like and how she has to deal with it by retreating into a fantasy life, but also just you know how like there are people who do want to help her, like like her new like her new, her new friend, like her sister, and also like the school counselor, whose work is arguably cut out for her, it's like because like she's dealing with like you know like someone who just like does not trust her as well, but she's doing she's giving it her best, and things like really just trying to kind of, and it's also kind of interesting to like observe how things keep getting keep going back and forth between just, you know, like, her, what's going on in her, it's like, uh, in the real world, and also how Barbara perce- perceives the world as well. It's like, and just how, you know, things come to a, like, come to a uh, crux, like, in the last couple of issues, when, it's like, when, like, you know, the giants actually do start showing up, and you're just kind of wondering, like, you know, well, maybe she wasn't as crazy as we thought. And then at the end, when, you know, like, not to give anything away, but I think that, you know, the ending it gets, um, does feel earned. And, and for, like, for all its, like, for all its warts, it's like, and, um, they think things that, you know, like, didn't read right in the first place and maybe haven't aged quite as, quite as well. It's like, it does, like, deliver like, an appreciably emotional finale that I think is worth, like, worth checking out. It's like, I mean, I got the uh, 15th anniversary edition of this series, so like, the fact that they're still reissuing this 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 comic 15 years after the fact, you know, should tell you something right there. And I will say that you know I appreciate all the uh, extras that they included here, which you know like there's a lot of like you know I mean there's the the standard stuff like you know the cover cover galleries, but also the uh, afterwards and commentary from. From um, Kelly and, and Nimura talking about that, you know how they like like how, how they, like, they worked upon like the uh, character designs for the for the creators, I mean for the characters, and also just you know like they're they're talking about how the series has found like an an international audience as well, which is really kind of impressive, like for like an independent American comic book, and also the uh, the fun um uh, like one one page um um bits where um where Nimura and Kelly um talk about their like um, detail their their creative creative relationship in a uh, very in a deeply what I hope is a deeply irreverent fashion. It's good. It's like it's fun. It's like and if you're going to read um only one um comic from this like from this podcast, this would be it. And, and also, I do want to say that you know, 
like you know well, i think like it's 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 quite well written overall the art from nimura is um really it's like it's still it's still really distinctive like he's got like a like a, a scratchy like a, a scratchy impressionistic style that it's like that you know it's not all about just like you know drawing everything but just you know capturing the like the like the emotion like and like the like and just like the overall like you know impression and style and style of a particular scene it's like he's good at drawing the uh like the grounded stuff and the uh like the really fantastic stuff as well which you know it's like it's it's a couple of extremes right there but you know it's like he act, but he pulls it off i'm um, quite quite well when you're when you're going between those those two extremes and you know it's like after this series you know hit hit um well it's like hit, hit really big um back it's like back when it came out um it's like in oh man when was it originally published uh, it's like uh what does it say here what does it say here um Ah, uh, damn it! I can't remember. Let's just say 2008 or so, because it's because it came out in the 15th anniversary edition came out last year. So there you go. So you think that you know, hey, you know, it's like after this hit and you know, like garnered a bunch of awards, a lot of buzz, like lots of sales, and even a movie that came out in 2008 with a script by Kelly. You think that you know, hey, shouldn't they just you know like hit it off again and just you know like do like you know more cre- like works on like you know like from the team that brought you i kill giants well no that's not actually what happened it's like what did happen um almost almost um 15 years later was the fact that um like was there um next collaboration that is immortal sergeant it's like it took a while to do it but you know they finally did another one and well is it as good? No, it's not. Is it still worth reading? Yes, but it kind of depends on your tolerance for a specific kind kind of story. Because, well, things have changed a lot since uh, I Kill Days of I Kill Giants, and it's not that they're trying to mine the same um, type of a ground right here. This, this isn't a story where you've got like you know like someone trying to like you know turn like you know what is like going between what is real and what is not. This is a story that is very much grounded in, you know, relatable human drama. Um, specifically, cop drama. And if you think, like, oh, cop drama, wow. It's like, you know, cops have, like, had an interesting last couple of years, you know. It's like, and yeah, yes, they have. And that's kind of the problem here, because this is probably like a series that would have read a lot better. It's like, had it come out in, like, in the golden age of like you know characters who uh of like like who did um bad things like you know, for what they believe was the right reasons like in the golden age of say like the shield you know that's when the series would have read without read really well without a without a second thought but what i'm getting at here is that mortal sergeant is a story about like refer, like it refers to like one detective sergeant jim sergeant yes detective sergeant sergeant who um it's like he's a he's just about to retire and like he's just you know not looking forward to it because like he just loves being a cop or you know he's totally committed to the idea of being a cop and he just doesn't want to like you know stop doing this even though like he's being like like you know, pushed like pushed out because of his age but um on the eve of his retirement though it's like his like his um family is coming down to like to support him in this that means his ex like his ex-wife, who's who um who um divorced him and remarried, like remarried a woman, and also his son Michael, who he just kind of like rever- like reveres as a uh, like a spoiled spoiled little um wimp- wimpy man child, and he just like loves nothing else, nothing more than just you know like like poke poke at him, just like remind him how much of a w- wuss he is, and. It's like and like even though like you know uh, Michael is not looking forward to this like his wife is really not looking forward to this the kids love him though obviously but um but this is but the thing is like you know Mike like them um, like um Michael just like realizes like you know he's he's my dad I've got to put up with him and you know he uh and so when he uh, follows his dad to this uh, like to this bar it's like when they're when he's out on like a uh, like a 
it's like on a, on a bender one night it's like you know he it's like he just kind of you know wants to like you know try and get some answers from him but then that's when um jim sees this one guy that he's been looking for for decades this one guy who can lead him to uh like to the guy who uh who was responsible for this one like unclosed case that he had regarding the death of an infant like early in his career that he has never let go and wants to uh wants to solve by whatever means necessary and when i say by whatever means necessary i mean yes like extrajudic- extrajudicially kill him because that's that's what he feels like the, the that he that he can do so 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 jim you know, does his best to gaslight his son and thinking that he needs him and like you know and tries and like you know bring gives him to come along with him on this trip to atlanta to take go and take take this guy out so basically what we've got here is a story of a uh like think of a, of a cop who is like you know very rude very vulgar um bo- um arguably ho- homophobic um definitely uh, more than a like more than a little racist but he's trying to like you know solve this this one last case before retirement and it's and yeah it's like you know it's like seeing him like like seeing uh like jim spew off his like seek, seek his mind and voice his opinions it's meant to be it feels like it's very meant to be like you know edgy and transgressive just like the kind of thing like you know like if you hear this you know like you know you don't say this this shit anymore or like as michael puts it you know this is why they want to defund the police because of all whatever all the stuff you're saying right now and yeah it's like i mean they're not wrong and you know it's like but at the same time though i can i can really kind of tell like this like see like the kind of story that we're that that um the killing name were want to want want to tell here that's you know about a man who's just you know been you know like like poisoned by the by the commitments of his job like to try and like you know do like take things out the best in the best way that he can and like i said if he can if you can look past that that stuff that just idea that you know hey it's a bad man trying to do the right thing like for a reason and in ways that are just you know more than a little fucked up then yeah it's like you're gonna enjoy it and i think the story itself it's like is like is well told it's like in the sense that you know like there's a lot of like there's all this struggle and back and forth between like you know how michael tries to like make his points his his point of view felt toward towards his dad and how like you know jim tries to you know that you know just basically like you know run rush shot over over it but also just you know realize that you know maybe like he might be wrong here maybe there's like he, he his way is maybe not the right way but it's but yeah you gotta, gotta be willing to look past a lot of like a lot of bullshit to get get to that point and even then though it's like um i think that the, the real issue with like with the story they're trying to tell here is that you want to have like a a, a story where this guy like this bad bad man like who's got all these human problems and that and that in the end you know he you want to say he does the right thing but it's not really like the right thing it's basically just like you know the not bad thing i mean just like like in the end like you know he stops and he because like you know, he's and he basically he's like he doesn't do it because you know okay that makes him not a terrible person but it just like it kind of means like you know he stops digging like this awful hole he, he's built for himself but it doesn't actually like show him trying to like fill it back up as well like the, the story does kind of let him off the hook without showing him that he's trying to like you know be a genuinely better person after this and i can imagine like there's probably a lot of people who who are going to look at this and go nah that doesn't work but there you go it's like i uh I don't know. It's like I still. Th- I don't think it's a bad story. It's like I, I enjoyed reading it, and it's probably gonna sit on my shelf for, a, like, for a good long while until shelf space basically just dis- dictates. Do I want to keep this on my shelf, or do I want to keep, say, um, like, like a, like a, oh, what else? What else do I got down here? What would be a good one volume thing? Oh, Solonin. Is it gonna be this or Solonin on my shelf? And then, then it's gonna be Solonin, obviously. But overall, it's like I think it's a good story for like you know. If you want like a uh, like you know bad cop doing like like doing like you know bad things for the right right reasons type type story, but so it's so it's entertaining if if nothing else it's it's like told told competently, and 
you know, it's like I, I think that, you know, like Kelly and Nimura still work pretty well as a te- team right here. And um, I, and I like seeing, like, the evolution of Nimura's style in the sense that, you know, like, while like, his work in I Kill Giants was, like, really like, sketchy and raw, this one feels, like, a lot more, like, refined, refined and polished. Like, it's still, like, this work of the same artist, but, you know, just, like, you know, in a different way. And it's, like, and it helps communicate the, uh, like, all, like, everything that's being told here, like, you know, quite, quite well overall. And also, I definitely appreciate the uh, copious amounts of um, making of materials that they in- that they included here, because I mean, not we don't just get a. Like, I mean, if if nothing else, I would appreciate the uh, lengthy afterward from 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 Joe Kelly because it basically like you know gives a lot of context of the story he's trying to tell here. And even if I don't think he quite you know gets that across, I get the feeling that you know this is a story that he was trying to tell you know in order like to help. Um, like reconcile his like complicated relationship with his dad, who was also a cop, who also had you know one major thing in common with um with the, with the protagonist here, and then but then you've also got like a lot of talk with um Nimura about his process about his process and in trying to find the uh, right character designs like for for Michael and Jim, it's like and even better still it's like you know there are like you know like storyboards for. Like for scenes that they were planning on including, but they didn't. And actual um cut scenes um for the uh, like um from the uh, comic itself, which you know you just don't see. Period. Man, it's like I can't I can't remember like I have to like rack my brain for a bit to like realize like to re- remember the last time I saw like, a comic that actual actually included like you know like scenes that they you know, they worked on and then decided nope um we we're not going to put this in here because it's just like it ruins the pacing. But I appreciate them including it here. It's just because, like, you know, one of the cutscenes is another one of um, Jim's stories, which, you know, are very off-color, arguably in bad taste, but are still very entertaining and deeply, darkly comic. It's like in their, it's like, it's like in their, their own unique way. So, yeah, it's like, like, if you, if you're in the mood for this kind of story, then yeah, it's like, it's gonna, it's gonna deliver. I just want you to know that, you know, not everything is going to uh, hit the way it is. They, the creators probably intended, but I, but you know, I still, I still enjoyed it overall. But really, it's like if you're going to buy one of these two graphic novels, it's going to be I Kill Giants because it's the one that you know still feels like it, it still has like a real genuine emotional impact, and that's still saying something after fifteen years and all. So kudos to them, and here's hoping it doesn't take another fifteen years for them to do um their next work because you know. These guys, you know, they, they clearly work well together, and I want to see what they do next, sooner rather than later. Yep. So, um, sounds pretty good. Do you know what you're going to be talking about next time? Funny you should mention that, because it turns out that, you know, at the time, well, what would seem unlikely that I have an idea at the time that I'm writing this, it turns out that, you know, a, uh, a conclusion to a series I've been reading for a little while is going to drop in the next couple of weeks. So, hey, so assuming everything goes well, um, come back next time to hear my thoughts on the finale of the uh, second Meta Baron cycle, or not. We'll, we'll hopefully, we'll, hopefully, we'll, like things will go well enough that you will. There you All go. All right, sounds good. We'll catch you next time on Comic Picks by the Grip. Right, later's. <laughs>